Hello everyone, welcome to Slip Joint Sawyer. Today we're going to be doing a restoration of a pretty old and vintage Swiss Army knife by Victorinox. Now this is the 84mm camper. Um, I did have to go to Dan at Bladebridge to help me identify it. Now it has all the same tools as the 91mm camper, but I couldn't find anything online and what I could find was I wasn't too sure about, but between the two of us managed to find out that the model number for this is 237K. Uh, it's a pre-1957, as you can see you have the old triangle punch on the front. And now this was a gift from Blade in Wales on Discord, formerly known as Tony's Ponies. So Tony, thank you very much for this. It's going to be a treasured piece in my collection. It's by far the oldest one, uh, and I, I'm going to say it's the rarest one I've managed to sort of accumulate. So thank you very much for this. We're going to do a bit of a restoration on it today and bring it back to its its former glory. Now it's not... In, hot, in like horrid condition, it's still really nice. It just needs a bit of a clean, like the pivots are a bit gunky and just a little bit of grime in like the little gaps and in the corkscrew. So it's gonna be a very sort of simple restoration. Uh, but we'll take a walk around the knife before we get started and then we will have a look at the end once it's done. So it's an 84 millimeter design, which is about 3.25 inches closed. You can see you have the old school Celador scales with the inlaid shield and of course, there being a cutout on the front and the back for this, as the old punch used to be this way. See, it is the triangle style punch. And then we also have the old corkscrew on here as well. As you can see, there is the five loops instead of four, which is the modern ones. And this is also grooved as well. No scale tools on this one then, and no key ring, so it makes for a really nice smooth, sort of sleek look in design. You get the standard opening layer, and I don't know if you can make it out there, but this is when they still had the pattern on the can opener. You just see the Swiss sort of cross there, and then the PAT for pattern. And you can see the tools are all in really good condition. They, it doesn't look like it's been abused at all, this knife. It's just not been cleaned, really. So you can see, like, the snap is not really there. But we can definitely bring that back with some very simple cleaning, which is what we're going to do today. And, of course, the cap lifter with no half stop. And the older ones as well does have a slight edge in here they sort of removed that on the newer ones and it's not entirely sharp but you can use it to i don't know cut something if you're really desperate and then in the middle we have the 84 millimeter saw which to me pretty much looks unused and if it has been used it's not a lot you can see those teeth all look absolutely fantastic on there and of course, you get the little flat bit at the end, which rests nicely on this bit of the spring to stop any sort of teeth getting damaged. See, that needs quite a bit of work as well. And then on the back, we have the old school clip point instead of the little pen blade they changed to. See, that's had quite a lot of use, all scratched up, needs a good sharpen. Length looks like it's still just about there. Maybe it's lost a little bit. Uh, where are we? We're about... 1.5 maybe just over that so yes yeah, about there for the for the edge and then we also get the and I've cut my nail so it's quite difficult the main blade on this which has also been used pretty heavily but whoever had it knew how to sharpen or know knew enough about sharpening that there is no sort of barely taken away and now when I was uh, we went camping with Tony Sean Mikey uh, Will came and MB from MB EDC and we were looking through his collection I sort of spotted this one and he told me he paid five pounds for this and he obviously could tell that I was really interested in it and he said I said I'd buy it from him and he just said no I could have it uh, I'm internally grateful for that main blade then is one to just shy of two and a half so there is a little bit of it, uh, length lost off there and then the cutting edge being one to like 2.1 so yeah about 0.1 of an inch taken off the edge here's the tang stamp so you've got victorinox switzerland stainless ross fry and then on the back you have victoria officer swiss with the crossbow going through as you can see it's pretty gummed up you can see that sort of stuff in there now normally i would take the scales off to do a full clean but as there's no scale tools on here and there's they're not gapped they've not bowed they fit on there absolutely perfectly. 
due to the age of the knife, I don't want to take these off, even if I put them in warm water in case I damage them. So we're going to leave them on and clean it like that and see how we get on. But the first step for me, I'm going to put it in my ultrasonic cleaner, which I have here. This is just a cheap one off Amazon. I think I paid £18 for it. It's got a load of different modes. You've got like two, three, five and ten minutes. I think I'm going to go for five minutes and see what it looks like. And then we can always do a bit more afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead, pop that in there and I'll pause the video and come back because it the ultrasonic cleaner does do something to the audio quality uh, i've noticed in previous videos so let's pop that in there the solution's already in i use been using this uh pro clean clean ultrasonic jewelry cleaner it pretty it works pretty well it's the first one i've bought and used an ultrasonic cleaner with and i haven't got a problem with it at all and it's a 20 to 1 dilution so that's a two a one liter bottle so you can get 20 liters out of it and I've probably got three quarters of the bottle left and I've used loads. But anyway, let's chuck that in, pop the lid on, and I will come back once that time is done. Okay, we're back and it's had its time. I gave it two lots of five minutes and you can see the little, the, all the grot that came off in the bottom of there, all that sort of stuff at the bottom. What we're gonna do now, take it out, dry it on this really lovely, nice clean cloth um, that's disgusting. Um, but it's only, I only really use it for drying off knives that are dirty, so that's fine. We'll pop this off to one side and we will see what the action's like if we're not sort of happy with it. I have got some water in a little tub here with some sort of dish soap in it, like Fairy or Dawn, wherever you are in the world. And we'll just sort of work the action in that and see how we get on. But let's dry it off now uh, and see what we're at. Hopefully the ultrasonic cleaner should have taken out most of the junk, all the loose sort of grot in there. And it already looks shinier to me. Um, so I'm pretty impressed with what that's done. So let's have a little look. So we already have some of the action back on this, which was basically stiff all the way down. So it's done a pretty good job. Now it's probably going to be quite grotty in there still. Yeah, there's still quite a lot of junk in there. So what I probably will end up doing is we're going to flush the pivots. And then while it's in there, I will use sort of some of these sort of cotton swab things and a toothbrush just to get some of the more of the easy to get dirt out and then we'll see what it looks like at the end so yeah even the blades getting some of it snapped back so let's grab the pot of water and sort of work those joints um, and sort of see how we get on now this is the way that victorinox show you in the little leaflets that you get inside the knives um, it's basically just to work the, the pivot inside some soapy water, let it dry out, oil it, and you're pretty much good to go. And I, I will have to admit, it, it genuinely is the best way to do it. Now, the way I find that's the safest is to hold the blade and work this, rather than trying to move the blade, slip, and cut yourself, even though this is pretty dull, you could still cut yourself. So I like to put submerge the blade in there and sort of just work this back and forth. Now, it can be easier sometimes to do it like this, but be very careful of of the blade sometimes you do need to hold it down just so you can sort of work all that in and there is i know it doesn't look like there's soap in here but there is a tiny amount in here you never really need much it's just enough that it can break down the old oils or any sort of grot that's in there and that's pretty much all all it will need and look at that back to sort of factory pull really nice snap on the open as well and that's literally all it takes just working the tools back and forth a little bit so we're just going to go ahead and do the rest of the tools while we're here
one's a bit lazy on the clothes. I think a bit of oil may bring that back a little bit better than that. But considering I've only used a bit of water, I think that's going pretty well. And now I have absolutely butchered my nails when I cut them this morning, so I have to use something to open that just because I don't want to tear them off my fingers. But the corkscrew feels like it's in excellent shape. I mean, that needs next to nothing. This one feels like it needs next to nothing. But just while we're here, give that a little work. Get the corkscrew back out and clean inside those channels. Just like so. Just get as much of that dirt out as we can. And then clean all the tops off. And what I like to do now then is open all the tools and see if we can get some more of that junk out of the channels. And I really cut my nails too short. But you can hear the action is really good. How are we looking on junk? Not too bad. See what we can get out with the toothbrush. It's obviously not going to reach all the way down the bottom. But with these sort of cleanups of old ones, I never want to be too aggressive because I don't want to end up damaging them. Because you think this was made before 1957 and it's 2024 now. So what's that going to be? 43, 43 to 2000 plus another 20... So it's, it's like a 70 year old knife. I just think that's ridiculous. And to be honest, the design hasn't come that far in that sort of 70 odd years. Victorinox have pretty much kept it pretty standard. And that, that's what, one of the things I love about them. Like their designs haven't changed that much. And I love the fact that they can update them very slightly, but maintain what we all know and love of the older designs. Um, but I'm going to pause here, I'm going to clean up all the wet mess and then we'll come back and look at sort of cleaning the tools up. Be back in a second. Okay, so we're back. The knife is all dried off. Pretty happy with how it sort of looks. I will be polishing up the cellar door scales a tiny bit, not too much, because I'd, with these older knives I like to leave them as, as close to sort of used as it can be. So it's still a little bit wet on the inside, so we're just going to work on maybe cleaning up some of the blades. I've uh, just got an old bit of cloth here, and a lot of these, honestly, I'm only going to be wiping them with with a cloth, because, I mean, look, look at the shine that's on those already. I think the only one I need to do a little bit of cleaning on is maybe the main blade, because it looks like it has a little bit of, not even rust, I'm not even sure what it is. But that one's pretty good. See what it is on that main blade. See if it can just come off with a wipe. Because if, if I can avoid using the polish on the blades, I will. Because I mean, if I if I do one, I'll feel like I have to do them all. So let's see if that sort of stuff has come off. Yeah, it just maybe looks like it's a bit of glue. Oh, it's literally gone. It looks like it maybe a bit a bit of a packing tape or something or some residue, whatever it might have been. But good old wipe with the cloth has taken that off, which is excellent news. Do need to clean out the nail nicks as well. But I'm really happy with how all these tools have come out in that ultrasonic cleaner. It's done a fantastic job. Action's good. Because they're in the, the age of the knife. Now, if it was a 90s knife, I probably wouldn't be happy with the action on that cap lifter. But considering the, the age, I have no issues with the action of that at all. Just going to sort of wind the corkscrew in and out a few times just with the cloth jammed in just to get so many more of that sort of stuff that you can't get out without sort of doing this. Just sort of wind it like so. Give the channels a bit of a wipe out just for any residue sort of water that's left lying around. I'm pretty impressed with how that's turned out. 
Okay, so we're going to work on the scales next, and for that I'm just going to use a tiny amount of Autosol. I'm going to put it a little dab on this cloth, and when I say small amount, I, I really mean like a small amount. It's not super abrasive, but I, you don't want to be working too much of it in because it will start, not start to take the colour off, but it will wear it away rather than, than polishing it. So I'm just going to sort of rub it into the cloth just so it's not going to leave a big deposit on the knife. And we'll just sort of go back and forth a little bit. Not even really to take off any of any of the scratches, like the cellar door will still hold a bit of dirt in the groove. And I mean, you can see how black that's gone already. Uh, just a, a quick little polish up should do this nicely. And always take a clean one to buff it off. And I mean, the difference. That's pretty much as far as I want to take it with the scales. So where have I put it? Just put another little dab. Just put it on the scale. That's probably too much. No, that should be all right. And we just sort of work that back and forth. Now, I only really go back and forth with stuff like this. I don't want to put any swirls in it. It's already scratched to hell. So we're just going to work this back and forth like this. Just a couple times, nothing too major. Give it a bit of a buff off. And yeah, pretty happy with that. It already feels smoother and, and cleaner when you buff off any sort of compound as it takes off the sort of the top layer of dirt. There you go, you can see that on there. Pretty shiny, nice, nice and good. So what we're gonna do now is while I wait for it, the pivots and stuff to dry, we're gonna sort of sharpen the blades and then we're not too far off being done. So I am going to grab my whetstone and get that set up and we will come back, do a little bit of sharpening. Okay, so we're back, we have the old faithful budget little sharpener which honestly is absolutely fantastic so a big thank you again to sean also known as naked sean for sending this along to the channel so i really appreciate it did go looking for one myself at my local well when i say local little it's quite far away um didn't have any in stock which is a bit of a shame but got this one here which i'm pretty sure is six hundred and one thousand. it says six thousand and one thousand, but this green is no way six thousand um, well, yeah, we're just going to put a nice little edge on the knife. Nothing major. Just going to sort of go for it, really. Always make sure the whetstone stays wet. I know that sounds silly saying make sure the whetstone's wet, but once it goes dry, you can really feel it grabbing and that's when it's gonna wear the stone out and put really bad scratches on your blade. I mean, it shouldn't really matter for this one because the blade is already pretty pretty messed up. But I like to do, I don't know, what was that, 10, 15 passes. Have a look off the camera just to see the edge that's coming on. See that there, all the way down to the tip, nice. And then we're just gonna do the same, but just towards us. Now you'll notice I'm not using any sort of angle guide and I've been trying to teach myself not to bother using it, just to sort of eyeball it. And I like to think I can get a sort of a rough 20 to 25 degrees. And I mean, all the knives I've done, I've been really happy with how they've turned out, so. Just going to sort of carry on doing that. And then go back just to take the burr off. Let's have a little look at that. Just wipe the blade off. <coughs> that 
edge there and there. Feels nice and sharp for that sort of grit stone. And while we've got that one out, we will do the pen blade as well. Well, not even a pen blade on this one. It's a little small clip point blade. I really wish they would bring that back. I know they did the the replica of the original one. It's really expensive though understand why it's expensive it's limited and they've made it the same way that it used to be made i just wish they would bring that clip blade back it's just really nice one of the reasons actually i really like the swiss buck knives is because they come with a main clip blade quite hard to come by now Have a look and see how we're getting on. Of course, now Victorian Ox knives, they never need to be super sharp. They're not a hard use knife. And I like to, recently, I've liked to have been leaving not super toothy edges on them, but you know, so they stay sharp a little bit longer with a bit of a toothier edge. You know, you haven't got to worry about like if you're cutting rope or anything like that with a Swiss Army knife, it's going to dull it quite quick because it's not the it's not the best heat treated steel, it's quite a budget steel, but. One of the reasons I love it, it sharpens up so easy. But that's what I'm going to be doing with this. I'm not really going to be taking it any further than that. 600, or well, six, yeah, 600, and then this 1,000 grit, I'm going to give it a bit of a strop, and that's honestly all I'm going to do for sharpening. It's not going to be really a use of this one because it was a gift, and I'd be terrified to lose it, and also because of the age, I'd be terrified to lose it. Apparently quite a rare piece, this 84mm climber. Um, again, the model number for that was 237K. This is pre, when they sort of standardised all the model numbers, they were all sort of a jumble of numbers and letters. Do you think the new sort of model number thing is much better than the older ones? There was no sort of correlation between the two, whereas now you've got uh, the climber... And the Huntsman and the Camper, they're all pretty similar. It's just like, I don't know, one, there's an example, 0 0.34, and then one's 2.4 and one's 1.4. That's not the actual numbers, but they all have some sort of correlation just with like one number change. Whereas these older numbers was just like, it just seemed like a free-for-all really of, I don't know, let's put a load of numbers in a hat and just pick out whichever one it is. This is the model number for this one. Yeah, that's enough of me blabbering on about absolute nonsense. That's a nice edge on there. Let's get the main blade out, if I can. And then we'll sort of just hone that in. And you'll notice with the, the sort of the honing stone, as if you would say, or like the higher grit stone, I'm sort of doing a path on each side because I'm not trying to take any metal off, I'm just sort of refining that edge. Just smoothing it out a bit, still leaving quite a toothy edge on it, but removing a lot of the, the roughness. But I still want it to cut like it glides through butter, but I also want to keep like a nice working edge on it. It's not one of these really silly angles like 15 degrees that's like highly polished and then as soon as you cut anything it's ruined. I don't really understand that. I did go through a phase where I did it on a few of my knives and then it just got to the point where I just used them until they were dull and then put the angle back to about 20. 20 to 25 is pretty much where it's at for a working knife I found the edge lasts a lot longer than anything less. But I mean if you like a less angle and that's what you enjoy 
crack on not don't let anyone tell you that it's wrong or anything like that with any aspect of your life to be honest not just about an angle on a knife if anyone's trying to tell you something you like is wrong there's no, there's no wrong answer you can like anything you want to like now let's clear this up that's enough of slippy the wise let's put him away for a bit uh, let's clean up this mess and then we'll strop the knife and then have a look at the finished product okay so as usual i've forgotten to bring my regular strop out to the the workshop to use so i've just taken this off the workshop pro for now i've just taken the rod out of it and it's a nice little handheld strop but we're just going to sort of strop it like this nothing really major just give it a nice pass back every so often that should be good i've uh, got some like receipt paper or something up here quite quite thin paper let's um let's see how i've done with that so that's i would say that's sharp happy with that one let's do the little clip Sometimes you can feel when there's a little burr or you can actually see it if you're stropping and you can see the strop gets like a, a rough groove on it. And the best way I've found to do that, honestly, is if you notice there's a burr on your knife, rather than ruining your strop doing it, just get a bit of wood and sort of just do this. And that pretty much takes it off. And the side of that sharpening thing works perfectly for that. Okay. Yep, yeah, happy with that too. Let's oil this bad boy up and then pretty much done, I think. I don't think there's anything else I want to do to it. There's no keyring, so I won't be putting any sort of lanyard or anything on it. Obviously, you know, Victorinox fanboy, you've got to use the Victorinox multi toy oil for your Swiss Army knives. And I'm just going to put little tiny bits inside these grooves try and get it in there like that a little bit on the pivots of these and then we'll do the corkscrew and the and the sort of the punch afterwards but just going to work them like that and the action is just so much better once they've been lubricated And even the snap come back back on that one. Happy with that. The saw. Snaps back. And then finally the main blade. snaps back and then the punch and the corkscrew i like to put it underneath for those but put a tiny amount in because obviously once you slam it back down it's just going to jet up through all the channels so i will do that off the camera just so i can see the amount i'm putting in because it needs very very little i don't know if you're going to see the amount i've put in there it's like a tiny dot in each and we're just going to sort of work them like that try and get them as far down to close as you can and the corkscrew and I've closed it and I'm not gonna be able to get it out yes there we go there is the finished product full sort of cleanup restoration of a pre-1957 84 millimeter camper now this was a gift from blades in Wales formerly known as Tony's pony so Tony Thank you very much for this. I absolutely love it. It's going to be a forever piece in the collection. There's no chance this is going anywhere. Model number 237K. 84mm camper. And apparently it's quite a rare model to find. So even, even better for my collection. But I really hope you enjoyed this cleanup. Sort of how to clean up a Swiss Army knife, for example. 
please be sure to like, subscribe and ring that bell for notifications and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Matt's got a sound, a man sharp as a blade Slip joint Sawyer is the name he made Pocket knives and tails they flow with flair Restoration stuff with craftsman's care Rusty steel polished bright in his hands Old souls revived with a steady glance Views keep climbing like a jagged peak One shot with those hammer sparks they speak Slip joint Sawyer grinding through the night Pocket knives gleam under flicker Man turn it steel to gold Every story cut deep Every piece sold